Hey, guy, check this out. What you, is that a Go Hoyas DC 101 foam finger? That's got to be circa like 84, 85, no? Circa 85. This is, you know, on our way to a historic loss in the title game against Nova. So later to that. But how about lost the color? What, what was the original color of that? <laughs> That's a great point. It's, uh, I, I assume it was blue or gray if it was, if I it was see Georgetown. You still have the DC 101, by the way. Yeah. When I was, I mean, I'd listen to the radio. I mean, that was a great, the Grease Man, that was a wonderful state. It was akin to uh, WNEW FM 1027 on your dial here. I think DC 101, I think Grease might have put in some time up north. I, I, I think Howard Stern put in some time down there. 100%. Um, and and uh, I had a little time for Carol Merrill, by the way. Um, Carol who? Uh, P, is that PLJ? No, that's One Carol Miller. Carol Miller. <laughs> Carol Mello, Carol <laughs> Merrill. Was like, let's make a deal. Prices is right or something. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. Radio in New York back in the day. So you had K Rock, you have PLJ. Um, if you were a little avant garde, and I bet a guy like you that was clubbing a little bit was doing like some, some WLIR out in the islands. We didn't get it. So right. you might have gotten it in the, in the mean streets of Scarsdale and Croton on the Hudson. We did not get WLIR, but I do recall. Well, I'm sure you guys were listening to dance music. So, so. Let's, let's talk about because, you know, radio is not a bad parlay into things that radio is not coming back in, in the material way that it was a part of our lives. Uh, obviously, we don't need to talk about serious radio. I want to talk about um, everybody's telling me that because of COVID-19, I'm no longer getting on a plane uh, in the next three to five years. I'm not going to see a sporting event in any place of significance anytime soon. I'm not going to go into a crowded Chipotle and get myself have a burrito blowout. I mean, you know. I'm not buying that. I get that there's some trends that are changing uh, out there, and we can talk about retail and whatnot, but but I think this is getting absurd. You? Yeah. I mean, I've seen the three to five years as well. I think that's pushing the envelope. I mean, I've seen where people say no major sporting events live until, you know, mid-2021, which, you know, what does that get us, 15 months from now? Maybe that's a stretch. You know, we had some Gilead news after hours tonight that was encouraging. I don't know what that means for any of this, but right. I think to your point about fundamentally changing, I think we'll be back to it hopefully sooner rather than later. But I think you would agree that it's not going to happen in the next six months. It's not going to happen in the next six months. So so let's talk about, you know, the businesses that, that I think are changing or, or, or that, you know, to me, I think it's more important to look at a company. Let's talk about Amazon, right? Uh, look at the move this company's had. It's It's a... It's up, I don't know, 20% in seven days. Uh, it's up 49% off that low that it hit, you know, in March uh, to where it is today. That was an intraday low, so I'm picking the, 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 the low to high. But Amazon's the company we were talking about two years ago that was changing uh, the face of retail. We were talking about it five years ago, but really starting two years ago, we were saying Amazon's putting people out of business. They're the biggest beneficiary right now. Uh, they're the best operator, uh, and they're now – moving hard into groceries and household items because of COVID-19. I get it. I don't know how you feel about valuation, but, but you know, the setup for Amazon is emerging out of this a stronger player, if it's possible. You're calling that. No, 100%. I mean, they were this, this trajectory of Amazon was taking place prior to, obviously, this accelerated it. I'm sure nobody, nobody at Amazon wanted this to happen for these reasons, but it's happened. So now you have to try to figure out what does it mean for the stock? To your point, I mean, this stock traded down to 1625 intraday, I think, on March 16th. Yeah. And has rallied, to your point, 45% since, which is, think about that for crazy, a second. Man. I mean, that's just a well, crazy that's, move. That's $600 billion in market cap. Um, and, and, over, and, over a very short amount of time. So what do you do? So one of the things I said earlier tonight, and, I, and I'm going to stand by it, I get the secular change. I get this as Amazon's world. We just live in it. But if you're being pragmatic or prudent, I think you got to take some profits in earnings next week. I think they report on or about the 23rd. Um, I'm sure they'll say great things, but it has to be ridiculously great things, in my opinion, to get the stock to continue to move to the upside. If I were playing it, I would yes. be taking profits and I'd be look for a pullback to 2170, if which you recall was the prior all-time high in this name. It makes a lot of sense for a lot of different reasons. My opinion. Good, le good levels on the stock. A stock everyone's got an opinion on, um, and you know what they say about opinions, but I, I won't bring that up here. I, I, I think that actually people tend to, the market rewards Amazon when they're actually 
uh, growing. And, and they don't necessarily have to be that profitable. I know there's times we've been worried about the spend, but um, you know, I, I, I'd say uh, Amazon is, 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 could continue to test higher because I think Amazon is truly a beneficiary. Now, I'm kind of surprised you're, you're let's put it this way. I, I'm guessing some of your negativity around Amazon is that the fact of the matter is the places you used to shop um, growing up and that let's, we need to go there. Uh, Amazon's obviously put out of business a long time ago. I mean, merry-go-round went into bankruptcy, I think 20 years ago. So it's yeah. not merry-go-round. It was one um, of the, the dark days of my life. And it was the other, the chess king is one of the places you used to like to shop at. <laughs> You know, for the audience that understands, I mean, we both grew up, well, we both grew up in Westchester. I grew up yeah. in the poor part of Westchester, northern Westchester. You grew up on the mean streets of Scarsdale. And I yeah, I was like, yeah, let's, like, so it was, hold on, hold on, pony boy. All right. So in other words, you, you were, you were a Grease and I was I a was Soch. A Grease, Is that you were Soch. You were Leif Garrett and I was, and I was Patrick. Dude, Spice. I got knifed, man. I got knifed by one of your thugs. And, and, and my and wife I is yelling out. Macho. She, you are, you are so hundred percent. I mean, right, by I'm, the way, Lake Garrett, one of the great, I mean, think about how he flamed out. What just, I mean, he, first of all, have you ever seen Peter Frampton and Lake Garrett in the same room? No, they're, it's, they're spitting image, but you know what? He was made for dancing all, all, all night long. And that behind the music, like he started that, it wasn't beyond, yeah, I guess. Yes, it was. That's the greatest watch on VH1 history. And it's tragic, man. I mean, what went down in the end and that, that, that ill-fated ride in the Porsche and, and the guy that's in the wheelchair. Um, and you thought by the end that he had actually kicked his, his dance with Mr. Brownstone, but uh, apparently not. And I just hope Leaf's doing okay today. You know, it's a You're, tough time. It's, first of all, it's not Leaf. It's not, it's not Leaf Erickson. It's Leif, number one. <laughs> and I'm sure, I'm sure he's doing fine. And hopefully, my wife just said he might have passed away. If he passed away, we got to recut this. But with oh, that man. said, I, I don't right. know. I, I'm not up to date on Leif Garrett. But what I am up to date is the things you just talked about. Brick and mortar retail going away and names like Amazon just dominating. I do think, and we've talked about this, there are other places in retail that have worked. I mean, yep. Costco has been crushing. Walmart, despite valuation. Target starting to pick up again. And a name that we've talked about, Dollar General, continues to make not 52-week highs, but all-time highs. So although it's clearly Amazon's world, I mean, brick and mortar is not necessarily dead. Yeah, and, and, and I'm guessing, me as the social, you know, you're going to Dollar General, but I'm, I'm probably going to Best Buy. Best Buy, if you remember the crisis 2008 and 2009, um, this was a stock that people didn't think was going to make it out of there. And, and again, they may have been one of the early kind of showrooming stories. You're the guy that sits on the couch in, in Best Buy on a Sunday afternoon and, and looks at TVs but never buys one. Um, I, I think Best Buy uh, on valuation, but also coming out of this, they, they've, look, what's happened in the last 15 years is every other electronics chain has fallen by the wayside. Um, they've actually worked with logistics and procurement and ERP, uh, and I like Best Buy here. And before we leave, um, yeah, I think and, I, I think and by the way, I don't show room, and my wife is now w working on some Leif Garrett trivia for us as we speak. Hopefully, I'm going to get this in a minute. All right, well, Linda, Linda, Linda Snow, uh, I think she's getting up in my grill. She's defending her man. I appreciate that. Hold um, on, every lady Leif should. Was Scott Bayo girl. She was a Scott Bayo girl. Apparently, Leif, Leif has been confirmed. Leif is in a wheelchair, so. I don't know. I mean, uh, hopefully, listen, I'm reading this. I'm quickly. just happy. Maybe we shouldn't have gone down the Leif Garrett rabbit hole, but we did. Here's what I need to do before we get out of here. Um, I, 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 we need to go through the cast of The Outsiders because I, I got to tell you, there's a lot. We talked, we almost did this in, in Fast Times, but think about that cast that was not anybody at the time in The Outsiders. And I'm talking about a Tom Cruise. I'm talking about uh, uh, Rob Lowe. We had a Rob Lowe. We had Rob Lowe. We had Swayze. We had Machio. C. You Thomas Emilio Estevez, right? And now here's here, here's the big one. I'm going to tell big. you right now what you're going to say. Don't say it. I'm going to tell you what you're going to say. You're going to say a young Diane Lane as Cherry Valens Boom. because I Boom. know you, and she crushed it. You know, you, you you've seen me sometimes when I when I'm when I'm a little you know smitten. I have trouble speaking. I'm out. Take it easy. I got nothing left. Uh, well, there you go. Then we'll catch you tomorrow on the Friday show. Thanks, Tim. <laughs>